Hello everyone, welcome to Utopia. This is the second video of a three-part series in which I'm trying to explain you how to become a doctor or a healthcare professional in Germany if you already graduated in a country that is not Germany. Now, if you haven't seen the first video, I recommend you to get back to it. I left the link in the description below and watch it because otherwise it's going to be confusing and you will not understand what I'm talking about. I left a link in the description down below so you can go and check it out. So today I'm going to explain all of the necessary steps from the moment that you decide to contact the Bezirksregierung until the moment that you do the FSP exam. In other words, German bureaucracy. Fun! But before I tell you the main steps, I would like to explain you why I'm doing this. Uh, I have to go through this process myself without anyone telling me what to do and I have to figure, figure out things by myself. And it was rather annoying, it was uh, long, it was excruciating, it was tiring. And so I really hoped that there was someone in YouTube who could just give it to me and say what you need to do, how you need to do it, and make my life a bit easier. So with this video I'm trying to make your life a bit easier, trying to prevent some headaches and some migraines. So you're sitting at home with your university diploma in one hand and with your Betzvai diploma in the other hand and then you are figuring out to which regirum do you send all of your papers and which papers you need to send. And so if you are already living in Germany it's quite easy, just find in, in Google Maps the local regirum of your city, the one where you're living and you just go there. As you know you have to find out the secretary who does the approbation process. But if you are not living in Germany, the possibilities are endless. You could contact any city. And here is where the rumors come into action. Now, some people say that you should always do it in East Germany. Some people say you should do it in West Germany. Some people talk about different Erste Kammer where it's easier, where it's more difficult. And so let me explain you a bit how the, how the rumor goes. So basically, everyone agrees that you could do it in East Germany. In East Germany, it's easier. Now, East Germany doesn't have so much money as West Germany and they don't have so many doctors and they are in a great need and therefore, theoretically, chances are that they are less punishing. On the other side, you have left Germany, West Germany, which has all of the doctors that they need. They speak Hochdeutsch and they don't have no incentive to let you pass. So theoretically, they're supposed to be a bit more difficult. And then you have the area of the south of Germany, closer to Switzerland, where they speak with a funny accent. Uh, some people say that because they speak with a funny accent, chances are that they will allow you to not understand them every now and then. So the misunderstandings are not so punishing. I personally did the exam in Münster, which is one of the main cities in the West Germany, and it's known to be one of the most difficult in the whole Germany to do this exam. And I failed the first time, not because it was too difficult, but because I didn't study enough. And then I prepared myself well, well and I passed the second time. And I did not notice any extra difficulty or any reason why one shouldn't pass if you, in case you studied. So I don't really agree with the rumors. I believe it's fair everywhere. And if you are ready, it doesn't matter where you do the exam. Therefore, my recommendation is if you are already living in Germany, just go wherever you are. It's going to be easier for you. And if you're not living in Germany, just go to wherever it's easier for you. And I mean transportation-wise. If you have a direct flight to a city that is cheap, choose that city. If you have a relative who can give you a place to sleep while you do the exam, then go there. All right, so now you want to know exactly how do you find the basic regierung, how do you exactly find this person, this secretary who is supposed to be in charge of the approbation. So you just go to Google and write, for example, um, Medizinische Approbation and the city where you want to do it, let's say in this case, Munich, right? And there we go. First, first option is already the Regierung, the official place. And since we wrote Approbation, it's already with all of the necessary information. As you can see, there's an explanation of what it is. It tells you exactly which papers you need to bring 
and it tells you also if they have to be in a Beglaubiter copy, in other words, if it needs to be a notarized copy. On top of that, it gives you other information like formulas that you need to bring as you send it per post, how much money you need to pay and other information. And at last, when you look at here in Fürsi Zuständig, you can find that they have a telephone, fax and an email of the person who is responsible to answer your questions about the approbation and to receive the certificates of good standing and all of that stuff. So now that you know how easy it is to get information from the Regierung, there is no real point that I tell you every single document and how every single document needs to be presented. Because as you can see there, some of them need the Glaubigun, some of them need translation. It's very well written, just read it. And there's no point that I explain every single one of them. However, there is some information that might not be there. And so let me give you some tips. Tip number one, the Besiks Regierung from different cities and the Erstekammer from different cities are independent from each other and they are allowed to change things. Therefore, what they might ask you in one place might not be the same as the other one, and also the exams may vary between two different cities. Tip number two. It is allowed to get the approbation in one state of Germany and then work in any other state of Germany. It's allowed. However, the Regierung and the Erste Kammer will not, will not like it. They don't like the idea of you getting the approbation by them and then working somewhere else. Therefore, when it comes to registration, they will ask you for proof that you have either a job waiting for you in that region or that at least you are trying to find a job in that region. Now, it doesn't matter what you want to do, exam in East Germany and then go to West Germany like many people do, just do it. But I recommend you to at least pretend that you're looking for a job in East Germany. You don't need to get a job. You just need to prove that you sent some job applications. Tip number three. This is very, very important. Some documents expire. I myself found that my documents had expired and I had to ask for them again. And by the time they would come, other documents would expire. And it was so annoying. Uh, so there's two documents that expire. The first one is the police paper, or that's what I call it. Uh, basically is that you did not commit a crime. This paper needs to be provided by every country in which you have lived for the past couple of years. And uh, it expires in one month, at least in Münster, where I did the FSP. And the second paper that expires is known as the good standing paper. That paper is provided not by the police, but by the Ministry of Health. And it says that you did not commit any medical crime and that you are still allowed to work in that country as a doctor. And it's required by the country where you graduated and by any other country in which you worked as a doctor. This paper expires in three months. Now, as you can see, there is a disbalance here. Also, getting the police paper takes a week per post and getting the other paper might take months. So by the time you get one paper, the other one has already expired and you would try to get the good standing paper first and two months later the police paper, but you can only trust that the government is going to do their job and send you the papers at the right time. So as you can see, the logistics are a problem. However, there are good news. Tip number four. You can send the documents in different batches. After you send the main documents, which is your CV, your ID, and the proof that you paid everything per post, they open a file. And once the file is open, then you can send any other paper whenever you want, two months later, and they, they archive it. So what you can do, unlike what I did, is to send them all the main documents, and then whenever you get the good sending paper, you send it again, and whenever you get the police paper, you send it as well. You do not have to send all of them by once. Tip number five. Now, this is a bit tricky and officially it's not possible, but I happen to be able to do it anyway. Now, the, the papers are supposed to be presented in the very specific way that it's written there. However, I presented my diploma and my Betz by originals. I happened to be there at the time I was doing the papers. And so I was told that if I presented the originals and they saw that it's originals, there's no point of sending a copy. And that is it for today. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some tips that will help you. And in the next video, we will talk exclusively about the exam, how to prepare for it and what to expect in it. And so without further ado, let's do it.